Hello everyone. I'm Carlos Carbonell, illustrator and digital artist. This is a tutorial about perspective drawing in Rebel. I will show you how and when to use the Rebel 7 perspective tools. This is a tutorial only for Rebel 7, because previous Rebel versions have different perspective tools. Perspective is a set of rules created by us, the humans, to represent 3D objects on a 2D artwork. We use them to apply volume and distance to objects. The two main perspective techniques used on artworks are the vanishing points and atmospheric perspective. This tutorial is about using vanishing points to draw objects using Rebel 7 perspective tool. I will also make a brief introduction about atmospheric perspective. Finally, I will do a practice drawing to showcase the workflow. It is convenient to start with lines. The simplest method to create lines in Rebel is the following. We use any painting tool, but for drawing, the pencils are best suited because they are more fine and precise. First, we move the cursor on the starting point of the line. Then, we press the shift key. Don't release the shift key, keep pressing it. A temporal ruler is created when we tap with the stylus. Now any brush stroke will be constrained to that temporal ruler. When we release the shift key, the temporal ruler disappears, and we will draw freehand again. So, anytime you need to create a line, press the shift key. This is a very fast and convenient way to create lines. However, we also have a complete rulers panel. Open the rulers panel on window menu or by pressing shift R. The rulers panel has three sections. This is line, ellipse, and perspective. Let's start selecting the line section. The line mode shows a HUD on the canvas with four circle handles. When this HUD is visible, your strokes will be constrained to the ruler. If you tap over the X handle, the HUD will disappear and you will be on freehand mode again. To show this HUD again, tap on line button of the rulers panel. The handle with an inner circle is used to move the ruler. The external handles are used to rotate the ruler. You can constrain the angle of rotation by pressing the shift key. The ruler is magnetic. If you apply a brush stroke when the cursor is near the ruler, you will draw using the ruler. Otherwise, you will draw in freehand. If you press the shift key before doing any brush stroke, you will create a temporal ruler different from the ruler's panel. You can lock the ruler by pressing the lock control points button. Click again to unlock the ruler. The freehand button activates a special mode. It's not fully freehand. You will not draw any straight line, but your brush strokes will be attracted if the cursor is near the ruler. The parallel lines mode is very useful. Select it if you want to draw as many parallel lines to the ruler as you wish. Use the ellipse tool to draw curves, ellipses, or circles. When you select it for the first time, it will show you a HUD with five handles and an elliptical ruler. Use the central handle to move the ruler. The bottom handle is used to close the ruler. The left handle is used to resize the ruler. Use the top handle to shrink the ruler vertically. The right handle is used to rotate the ruler. If you don't use the shrink handle, the ruler will be a perfect circle, otherwise it will be an ellipse. If you use the shrink handle, there's only one way to get back to a perfect circle. This is by using the undo shortcut. The freehand and lock control points buttons do the same as line ruler. The parallel lines button also does the same. But in this case you will be able to create concentric lines. 
the last section is the perspective ruler. You can select one, two, or three points. You will have the same number of handles as the name suggests, for example two handles if you have selected two points. You can move any of the handles. The two and three points perspective show a line, this the horizon line. It isn't literally the line of the horizon, it really is where our eyes are pointing. It may be the case that you are doing a drawing from the point of view on the top of a skyscraper. In this case your eyes are pointing to the sky, not over the horizon line of the landscape. So, we horizon line is located where it matches our sight, not the real landscape horizon. Otherwise, if we draw a perspective from the ground, the rebel horizon line will match the real horizon line of the landscape. If the button lock horizontally is unselected, you will be able to rotate the horizon line. When you select lock horizontally button again, the horizon line will be horizontal again. As with the other ruler tools, you can lock the control points. The freehand mode it's more useful in perspective ruler. Line and ellipse rulers only have one ruler. However the perspective ruler have influence over the entire canvas. This is useful if you want to draw perspective with a loose drawing, without doing doing straight lines. The one point perspective is the easiest, and may be the most used perspective. It only has one vanishing point. All lines created using this perspective will be pointing to the vanishing point, or drawn horizontally or vertically. Let's practice this by drawing a cube. First be create the frontal face of a cube. You will need to be careful when you start doing a brush stroke when using a perspective ruler. Even if you are using rulers, if your initial brush stroke isn't horizontal or vertical, the line will point to the vanishing point. It's easy to create a vanished line instead of a vertical or horizontal one. Then we draw vanishing lines starting from each one of the four square vertex. We create an horizontal line at the bottom. This creates the bottom face of the cube in two more vertex. We draw two vertical lines starting from these two vertex. Finally, we create the last horizontal line. We have a nice cube. Now we can polish it by erasing any unwanted lines. When you draw a cube in perspective, it will be showed only three faces of it. So, if you want, you don't need to draw all cube faces, only the three visible ones. Let's draw another cube on a different area of the canvas. As you can see, this is like adding buildings on a city. The two points perspective is useful to represent geometric objects viewed from a non-frontal point of view. With this mode selected, we have two vanishing points. We also have an horizon line represented. Any object above that line will also be above us. Any object below the line will be in front of us or above. Now we cannot use horizontal lines, but at the same time we are not restricted to frontal view. This way we can draw any geometrical object from any angle. Let's see it in action, by drawing some cubes. We draw a cube, the same way as before. By default, the two points perspective, looks more pronounced. This means that, in order to look more realistic, we need to put more distance between the two vanishing points. As you can see, the two points perspective look more realistic. But at the same time, it makes everything more complicated. The last method is the three points perspective. It's the same as the two points method. 
This means we have a horizon line with two vanishing points. In addition, we have a third vanishing point, used to represent big or near objects. We will name it vertical point. At the same time, the third vanishing point is where our sight is pointing. If we put the third vanishing point on top of the horizon line, the objects will look as if we are standing in the ground and watching to the sky. If we put the third vanishing point below the horizon line, the objects will like as we are in the air and watching to the ground. Let's see this in practice by drawing a couple or cubes. In tree point perspective, we are unable to draw horizontal or vertical lines. In exchange of that, we achieve a more dramatic composition. We already know how to use the perspective tools. Now we need to decide which perspective to use. Usually you will use one or two pints perspective. You can also combine both methods. Instead, the three points perspective needs to be used alone, otherwise it will look unrealistic. If you want to draw a single building, the best is one point perspective. If this building isn't the main subject of the artwork, it's best to use two points perspective. If you draw a city street, it's best to use one point perspective, because all buildings are perfectly aligned and have the same angle. If you draw many buildings with different angles, you will need to use two points perspective. You may need to change the vanishing points location for each building. You may even combine one and two points perspective. As said before, the three points perspective must be used alone, never combined with one or two points. You may change the two vanishing points on the horizon line to change the angle of the buildings but the vertical point cannot be touched. The three points perspective is good to add drama to our artworks. Foreshortening consists of shrinking the size of distant objects and making the near objects more big. This will make the perspective more pronounced. For example, when we watch a human figure from the bottom, the feet will look much more big than the head compared to when we watch it from a frontal view. You can use one, two or three points perspective to add foreshortening. However, if you use a very near object perspective or you want to add a more dramatic effect, use three points. Atmospheric perspective, also called aerial perspective, is about choosing the right colors when painting landscapes. We choose different colors depending on the distance of the object. There's different techniques and rules when painting atmospheric perspective. You can use any of these techniques, or all of them at the same time. First, we use different values depending on the distance. The nearest objects have a higher value. The distant objects have a lower value. This helps to make more relevant the foreground objects. Another technique is to use more saturation on nearest objects. We make this to add contrast between different objects, enhancing the feel of distance. The last technique is to use a blue colorization. The far the object, the most blue will be. This is based on real-world physics, it's due to the reflection of the sky over the objects, more visible on distant objects. There's more techniques to add the fell of distance. For example, making the near objects more warm and the distant objects more cold. We can also lower the contrast of distant objects, or make them more brighter. A last technique is to add less details on distant objects. You can use all of these techniques, but the first three are the most usual when painting atmospheric perspective, especially the blue colorization on distant objects.
let's practice everything we learned. You can use any reference you wish. I will use an own photo of a church. The photo has a three points perspective because I used a wide angle lens. But I will use two points perspective because in reality the focal length of our eyes makes the buildings look more straight at that distance. I will trace it to make it more easy. First I place the two vanishing points on the right location. I start drawing the perspective. The two-point perspective is different from the reference. I have to change a little the placement of the lines. We can use the ellipse ruler to draw the arcs. I press the shift key to draw lines out of the perspective. I draw some of the windows by using parallel lines and the ellipse ruler. Then I use the perspective setting of the transform tool. This helps to add the right perspective to any two-dimensional drawing. And this is it about the new and useful perspective tools of Rebel 7. I hope you liked this tutorial and helped you to understand and use perspective with your compositions in Rebel 7. See you in the next video.